How's it going, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson. This is the place where you can learn how to master your health, your wealth, and your love all in one place. So I hope you look forward to another great episode with another great guest. Um, before we get started, I do want to remind everybody that the best way to, to support the show is to simply subscribe, like, and share this episode with your friends. Also, if you want to get more involved with the show, check out our website at pursuinggreatnesspodcast.com. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you have your paper, pen and paper ready to take some notes on some great wisdom coming your way. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the other side of the episode. All right, we are live. Today we have with us Michael Giorgio. Michael is the co-founder of Imagine Ovation, an award-winning technology company, and also a podcaster, marketing leader, and business storyteller. Michael, thank you very much for jumping on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate the, the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's yeah. a pleasure to have you on. Um, to get everybody started, why don't you tell everybody who you are, what you do, and how you got started down that path in the first place? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, really, the whole journey started with, um, it was about nine years ago, me and my brother-in-law uh, came up with this idea to start a, really, a, a web development uh, agency. Um, and it started organically, 100% bootstrapped. Uh, I actually, I came from Australia. Um, I did my master's degree there. So not that I'm from there, but I was there in 2010, 2011. And then I came back and I was unemployed for about seven months. And um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. So, you know, uh, my brother-in-law, he was, or he, my future brother-in-law at that time, he was getting ready, getting ready to marry my sister. And he uh, was, you know, a tech guru and he worked at a large technology company and um, he said, hey, let's, let's be 50-50 partners and you kind of be head of marketing. He'll be head of tech. So it was like a really good fine balance. Nice. And we came up with the name Imagine Innovation, which is Imagination Turns to Innovation. Um, and um, that was more of the personality of our, of our brand. And, and then, um, yeah, we, start, we, we actually, the reason we started, Gabriel, is because we had developers overseas that Pete, my business partner, had known. And they were willing to work for free for us for about three to four months. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. And that's the reason we started, honestly, like thanks to them because that opportunity. And um, three weeks in after we started, we incorporated the company. I was aggressively marketing, selling. Um, you know, we didn't spend any money nearly. We were, I was selling on Craigslist, putting oh, nice. ads all over Craigslist, all over, man. Like I probably put in that's a few hundred ads. I yeah. got banned from Craigslist about five or six times. Um, <laughs> and I just found ways to pivot, didn't make excuses. I found ways to make the ads different and, and um, make them more unique. And yeah, I was just able to continue to sell uh, on that platform. And, um, you know, it didn't give us the best leads, but, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it paid, you know, it helped us to grow and start the company and pay the bills. And, um, and then we just grew from there. And then three weeks after we started, I closed a $10,000 deal. Um, and yeah, not bad for three weeks in and not bad at all. Yeah, not bad. And we just, we just grew from there, man. And went through the, the whole startup culture and then, you know, the ups and downs, the roller coaster, a lot of the times where you just, you want to quit and you want to give up and we just kept going, man. So we grinded hard, we invested everything back into the business, um, took very low salaries for three to four years, paying ourselves about a thousand dollars a month, not even minimum wage. Um, working anywhere from eight to 15 hours a day. Um, and then Pete uh, was able to quit his, his full-time job. And then he was, um, he was working day to day with me at the company. And we just uh, were able to, to hit the, um, I believe we hit the million dollar mark um, at year five or six. I don't remember. I think it was like year five or six. And now we're, we're almost nine years in. So, uh, wow. I and, love it. Um, yeah, and right now we're the, the team is about the size of around 25 full-time people. Um, at 1.3 or two and a half years ago, we were almost 55 to 60 full-time people. So oh. it just showed the company scale up and down, but we'll get back there. Um, but now we're, you know, we're just known as a turnkey tech company building web and mobile apps for startups to even enterprise level companies. We do some AI, IoT, and pretty much turn any idea into a reality. So that's a uh, long story short. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I, I so um, one thing that we really like here or that I like to discuss with guests is um, especially ones that started a company 
is uh, the beginning because, um, you know, it's always, that is the hard part. You know, once you got a business and it's running, it's, uh, it's not easy, but it's not, um, yeah. it's not like the stress and the, uh, the, the strain that you feel when you're starting the business. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, you guys, it sounds like you guys had a little bit of a boon there at the start because you, you were uh, inter- connected somehow with a development company that you got to work for free. Go, mm-hmm. go into that story. How'd that happen? Uh, well, Pete, my business partner, he knew these developers. So they were in India and he knew these developers uh, with pre- he worked with them at a previous job. So he had okay. a relationship with them. And then we just had that connection to India. And then we just built our team organically. So uh, we ended up having this hybrid model where we employ people here in the US and in India, we started to perfect it. And don't get me wrong, man, like we went through, I mean, having offshore people, it's very, very difficult. It's a uh, it's a model that is uh, a lot of companies can't conquer it, and it, it, quite frankly, most of them fail at it. And um, it's just very, very hard. And culture, communication, quality of work, all that stuff. It's just very difficult. So we just never gave up, and we continue to improve. And over time, we just got better at it. Like anything, right? You just keep going, keep going, and trying to improve on your mistakes and. Uh, we kept persevering and, and we were very, very, very patient during the process. Um, and we incorporated a lot of our, our passion as well, loving what we, what we did. And, and it just got us through a lot of hard times, man. Honestly, it was, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's funny when you start a company and I'm sure you know this, you being an entrepreneur, when you start a new business, it's not the glimpse and glamor that you see on Facebook with the Ferraris <laughs> and all this crap. It's just crazy. All the stuff going on, the, the false realities, right? So uh, I like to tell people that it, it's it's fun, it's enjoyable, but it also can be hell and it can be very yeah. difficult. There's a lot of tough, tough grinding and hard work. And um, it's just, it takes a lot of, for me, I believe, um, you know, I call it the three Ps. You have to incorporate an insane amount of patience, perseverance, and passion. If you have those three things, you will have a high chance of making it. Hard work is, is a part of it. It's a part of the, the perseverance factor, um, but it's not just hard work because you can work 18 hours a day, you get burnt out and you can fail. So you have to work smart and you have yeah. to keep improving over time. So it's just about being consistent and, and just keep moving, moving, moving. And then you start to find your rhythm and then you lose your rhythm and then you get it back again and then you lose your rhythm and you get it back again. So it's, it's uh yeah I like to kind of tell the reality of it. <laughs> yeah no I I love it and for <clears throat> patience perseverance and passion I think that's a really good kind of motto when you're when you're getting into the new thing because I'm totally with you. Um you know when I started I, I run a couple businesses the podcasting and then real estate investing. Mm. Um and you know when I started both of them there are times when you wake up and I'm I just think to myself I'm like okay is my mind going to be in a good space or a bad space? It doesn't really matter because I'm going to do the same things, but it's just, it's almost a toss up because it is such a roller coaster um, Mm -hmm. when you're going through everything because you have this expectation, you have this, this dream, you, you know, you, you had your, your tech company that you wanted to start um, and you had this picture in your mind. Once you get into the reality of executing that picture, it all goes to shit. Not, I mean, the, the general frame is going to stay there, but it's, it's amazing how many things that you actually run into um, when you're starting to build something. And patience, perseverance, and passion are definitely uh, key ingredients for getting yourself over the humps that you will inevitably run into. And I like what you just said real quick about the instant gratification element, because that I think is a big issue, especially with the younger generation. They want things so quickly. They want things uh, instantly. And I'm sure social media has something to do with it right now where things are evolving, things are changing. Um, it was different when you, when you and I were kids, but um, we have a lack of patience. And I think it's good to, to be mindful that, you know what, if you want to build anything great, it's going to take years and years of work. You're not going to expect it overnight. So. Yeah. yeah. And I even tell people, um, you should dedicate because obviously if you're, if you've been going at something for you know five years and you haven't had any results, you should definitely pivot there. There mm-hmm. is a point at which you need, you do need to Absolutely. You know, accept reality and, and make changes. But um, I definitely think that point never comes before a year. Um, you need to give whatever you're doing at least a year. If you don't see some kind of 
you know, improvement, some kind of movement, um, then definitely move, move on, you know, change your, your position in life, but at least give whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, give it a year because that is the time that it'll take to, to really see the movement that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. So, um, let's get into your, your business today. So you guys are, you're doing, you're, you're doing app development, correct? And web development. That's right. App, web, mobile. Uh, yeah, pretty much anything digitizing, uh, old, uh, platforms. Sometimes companies will come to us and they have like an, uh, a, a old legacy portal or something like that. Um, that hasn't been touched for 10 years and <laughs> they're, they're making, you know, they're, they're, they're generating revenue on it. Some, sometimes I even wonder how they're doing it, but Hey, um, and you know, they come to us and they're just like, Hey, listen, guys, we have a big problem. Our, in, our intranet por portal basically runs our company and it's, uh, it's failing and it needs a lot of, uh, redesign and all this stuff. So we work with them and we, we, we modernize it. Gotcha. I love it. So, I mean, there are people who are listening and watching who are growing their businesses, who are even starting or considering to start their, their own business. Um, and offshore is a big, a big thing these days because, you know, we, we're, um, we're a very distributed team base uh, in, in the modern world. And, you know, looking offshore, hiring offshore is a consideration of a lot of companies. Um, what are some, I guess, your top two tips when you're, when you're considering doing remote works, uh, re hiring remote workers? Uh, I, I think there are similar characteristics with offshore and onshore uh, in terms of hiring. You have to really hire slowly and fire quickly. Um, and I hate to use the word fire because I hate to do it. And I know all of us as business owners have done it and we will do it because sometimes you're going to find you're going to have the wrong employee. It, it's just a part of it. It's, it's reality. Um, but you're going to do less firing if you have the right people. So essentially what we do is we have a thorough interview process. We have a recruiting company in India and here in the U S um, that we've built a relationship with and they give us really good talent. They vet them. We tell them what, what we want. They vet them. They give us good candidates and we go through like three or four interviews with them, screening tech interview, uh, and, and all that good stuff. And then, and, uh, and, and then we decide if they're a good fit or not. Right. And then we give them three months to see how the performance is. And if they don't perform well, then it's part, just part of the recruit, recruiting contract. Um, and then also we get people that come to us from LinkedIn and Indeed and all of that. Um, and that's worked here and there, but we, we try to implement the same process. So hire slowly. Don't be impulsive with your hiring. Um, I, you know, we've done it as well where we we're desperate to hire because we'll get a new contract. We'll be like, oh, we just closed a hundred K deal, big application. We need, we need someone immediately. That's part of scaling. You need to prepare your your processes and your company in a way that okay let's have some buffer time three to four weeks let's just say when if we do sign a client let's work on some strategy let's do a discovery with them let's do all of this other stuff to give us some time to hire the right talent um and uh but as as you grow and as you scale you start to you start to just figure out uh how to how to really allocate the right resources to the right project and how to, how to hire efficiently and effectively. Um, but all that just comes from experience. I mean, we're still learning even nine years in, you know, we're, I think we're still considerably young as a company. It's very young, but uh, yeah, man, as my advice is, is to just hire slowly, hire strategically. Uh, don't be impulsive with it. Don't show desperation because what, especially when you're going to hire salespeople, they're, they're and I'm and I'm a sales and marketing guy, so I'm not biased. But they're gonna be there to sell. They're gonna sell you in the interview. So try to really analyze them, get to know them personally. Figure out can you have a beer with this person? Can you can you not to the point where being you're gonna be friends, but can you essentially you know um, can can you build a long term relationship with this person? Are you cool with them? Can you have fun with them? Um, because you're gonna be working with them for a long time, so you need to be able to to have that rapport. That's very important. It's not just about skills and talent and experience. That goes a, a long way, but you have to add the human element to it. And that's the personality. That's their story. That's all of that. So I think that's very vital. Absolutely. Hire slow, fire fast, and look for integrity and character when you're, Correct. When you're hiring. Um, great pieces of advice. 
Awesome. Well, Michael, we are towards the end of the episode. I'm going to go into the quick question round. So um, there's going to be five really quick questions. Uh, answer them as you will. First one goes into books. I'm a big bookie. So um, your favorite uh, business book and your favorite life, just general life advice book, what are they? So I'm going to shock you here. Um, this is crazy, but I've actually never read a full book in my life. Wow. I love it. <laughs> I know. I know it's crazy. And it's, it's a little, I'm a, a little vulnerable saying that. Cause I'm like, man, that's crazy. I haven't, but that is, uh, that is a goal that I have. I've read snippets of books. Like uh, I can tell you this Seth Godin, Seth Godin. Mm-hmm. Right. So I've, I've read pieces of his book. Um, and I've read pieces of, uh, Lewis Howe's, uh, school of greatness. So a lot of, I've taken a lot of different things from books, but never read a full book. Um, and I probably read full books online maybe, but I, mm-hmm. not, nothing that really comes to mind. A little bit of Tony Robbins, but yeah, yeah man. Just no, it's, different it's all good. We all, we get, we all get our education from different areas and, and right. books not, might not be the way that you, you get it. So it's all good. Yeah. <clears throat> Moving on. This one's kind of in your wheelhouse. Um, your favorite app or tool. Uh, you know, I would say I, I do love Slack. Mm. Yeah, Slack's a good one, at least on a business perspective. It's really good for communication. It eliminates email. Emails sometimes get cluttered. I, would, I think Slack is one of my favorite apps. Yeah, Slack is good. And um, I love LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn a lot. So I love the LinkedIn app. And yeah, Perfect. both the LinkedIn and Slack are probably one of the top two. Yep. And for those who don't know what Slack is, it's kind of like an IM platform uh, for your business. It's, uh, it's super useful. Um, next one, what is the habit that contributes most to your success? I would say my faith. So in the morning, what I do is, um, every single morning is, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll I wake up, take a shower and what, and, and I always pray in the morning always. So I, I try to incorporate, um, some prayer or meditation every single morning. Um, if I don't have that, then I don't feel complete. I don't feel like I, I just feel a little lost. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, when you connect with a higher power for me, it's very important. So, you know, I talk to God every morning. That's important to me. I love that. You definitely have to connect to the higher source. Um, I mean, especially when it comes to morning routines, I think that's one of the most important things that you can do. Apologize. My uh, throat's having issues this morning. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Final one. If somebody wanted to connect with you, what is the best way for them to reach out? You know, I would say probably LinkedIn. Okay. I'm on there a lot. Yeah. It, that's probably even better than email. LinkedIn's very powerful. It's a booming platform and uh, I'm, I'm always trying to grow my audience. So just, uh, it would be at the Michael Giorgio. All right. So LinkedIn, if you want to reach out to Michael, go to at the Michael Giorgio on LinkedIn. It's the best way to do it. I will also put his LinkedIn URL in the show notes. So if you want to click through there, go ahead and reach out to Michael. Um, Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you very much for jumping on the show. I appreciate having you on here. Um, For everybody who uh, came on this journey with us, thank you guys for showing up. Um, Again, the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share with your friends and family. And uh, we look forward to having you on the next episode. Awesome. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for sticking with us on another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast. I hope you got a lot of value out of that guest. Um, Again, the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share with your friends and family. Also, check out PursuingGreatnessPodcast.com if you want to get more information about what we do and what we offer. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and, uh, and keep living in integrity with yourselves. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode coming shortly.